Hello, I am Professor S. Shankaran in the Department of Metallurgical and Materials Engineering. Hello everyone, welcome to this uh, NPTEL course and let us continue our discussion on uh, dislocations. Uh, if you recall what we have discussed in the last lecture, we started with geometry of dislocations and we looked at different uh, aspects of uh, describing the dislocation in terms of uh, slip vector and uh, and its orientation with respect to uh, crystal geometry and we also looked at uh, the energy of dislocation later and then a detailed description on a stress field around this uh, dislocation and we also looked at uh, a force on a dislocation or other forces on dislocation and then we found that these forces could be uh, either within the crystal or it could be an external stress or it could cause by another dislocation itself and uh, we also uh, started looking at uh, various uh, dislocation uh, reaction that in terms of whether the dislocate unit dislocation can dissociate into two partial dislocation or two partial dislocation can combine to form a, a unit dislocation based on Frank's rule. And later we just uh, uh, moved on to a concept called stacking fault about this uh, through this partial dislocations where a, a partial, partial dislocation, uh, a typical um, uh, nature is a by 6 1 1 2 kind type of uh, dislocation if it pass through for example an fcc lattice and it alters the uh, stacking that also we have seen in terms of uh, uh, vectorial form as well as in the uh, some nice schematics how the faulted region is uh, visualized and so on and the stacking fault energy is measured uh, millijoules per meter squared because uh, dislocation we measure energy per unit length this is energy per unit area because the the faulted, faulted region occupies a definite amount of region which, uh, which is measured and uh, we have also seen uh, based on the how the frank rule uh, is useful to find out for a given dislocation whether it will dissociate or not and so on and later we also started looking at uh, how the dislocation moves we, we started with the edge dislocation how it moves with in response to the shear stress and then we also found that the elastic strain energy which is stored in the uh, system has to balance the um, the atom which is moving away from this uh, dislocation core and which uh, which act against the the restoring of the neighboring atom to its uh, equilibrium position and so on and we also started looking uh, at um, interactions of uh, two dislocations okay and uh, we we just looked at uh, how the two, two dislocation of similar sign uh, will react with each other or opposite sign how they will react with each other. So we are going to continue that uh, idea today. So interactions between two parallel dislocations. So we, we will just look at the concepts which we have already seen in the last class. It, it will be slightly redundant here but it is still okay. Uh, looking, looking uh, it's kind of a revision again. Okay? If the stress fields of two dislocation cancel, the dislocation attract each other. And if they reinforce, the dislocations repel each other. Okay. So by interaction, a dislocation change their total free energy. And we are looking at the rate of change of energy with the distance. Give the force between them. Please understand that. We are, we are looking at the rate of change of energy with the distance of a dislocation. So, if you look at the uh, force 
uh, in a polar coordinates, the radial and angular components that is f by l r and f by l theta of the force per unit length f by l between two dislocations having parallel lines are given in a polar coordinates by the equation below. What is this equation? This is a equation f by l r is equal to c times b b1 dot b2 by r. This is valid for both edge and screw dislocations. <coughs> Excuse me. So the angular component is given by f by l theta is equal to c times b1 dot b2 sin 2 theta by r. This is for edge dislocation which is uh, 0 for screw dislocation. What is C here? Um, as, as we mentioned in the previous class, the force is proportional to the dot product here because the, we assume that it is confined to a single plane. So, so the scalar product is valid here of uh, the two Burgers vectors. C is a constant which is equal to g by 2 pi for a screw dislocation and uh, g by 2 pi times 1 minus u for a edge dislocation. So we have enough background to recognize these kind of uh, elastic uh, constant modification uh, because of the plane problems that we have already mentioned twice. So theta is the angle between the slip plane and the plane containing both dislocation lines, R is the distance of separation of the dislocation lines. So the whole thing we have already uh, seen once, but uh, yeah, it is uh, it's nice to recall all this uh, once again. And we have already seen that the screw dislocations of opposite sign and the same Burgers vectors will attract with the force per unit length of GB square by 2 pi R. If unimpeded, they come together, annihilate, and leave the perfect lattice. Okay. Uh, screw dislocation of like sign and the Burgett vector will repel with the force per unit length of the same magnitude. So we can, uh, these are all general guidelines, but with this background, we can uh, think of a number of different interactions that can occur between parallel edge dislocations because of their stress fields. We have to remember that uh, having gone through all these details of the stress fields, uh, we appreciate that the stress fields around the edge dislocations are quite complex. And um, uh, if you recall the, the upper half plane, the, the, the whole crystal is uh, subjected to hydrostatic compression, the bottom half is subjected to hydrostatic tension. Okay, just to recall this. So, under the same uh, shear stress, edge dislocations of opposite sign will move in opposite directions and produce a slip of the same sense. What does that mean? Suppose if you have uh, uh, two edge dislocations of uh, opposite sign like this and the shear stress is applied in this direction and then they will move in opposite direction. And they, when they leave the crystal, and then it leaves the steps. A slip step is uh, left on the uh, crystal or a lattice. Yeah. And this is one uh, nice schematic which uh, shows that, you know, this location of the same sign, they ripple each other. Okay. This is, uh, this contours nicely. Um, convey that uh, the kind of stress fields around this uh, this location. This is uh, compression, this is tension. And uh, the two dislocations of the opposite sign, they get attracted, you know why. And uh, yeah, this is a nice uh, symbolism. And then what you really get is a perfect crystal. This is called a dislocation annihilation. This we uh, very frequently we will use this term when we uh, when we involve the dislocation dynamics uh, as a consequence of uh, either deformation or a heat treatment or any processing uh, conditions. 
Okay, uh, now we'll look at some specific uh, and interesting examples. What you are seeing is uh, here uh, two simple uh, interactions you will see uh, between parallel two edge dislocations. Regions labeled C and T are respectively regions of compression and tension in this uh, uh, schematic. It's the same uh, edge dislocations and they are trying to repel each other. Uh, but the, the repulsion is always not uh, going to happen. Like dislocation on a same or nearby planes ripple. Here we are considered that these two dislocations, edge dislocations, lie in the same plane or nearby. There are two things. They try to ripple. But that is not always the case. Okay. What is the other possibility? Like dislocations on widely spaced planes may attract or ripple. So this is important. We have to just uh, uh, remember this point. Very important point. And it will uh, lead to a very logical conclusion. You just see. So if the like dislocations are widely separated, they may get attract or ripple depending upon the angle between the slip plane and the line joining the dislocations. So how do we understand this? To understand this only, this schematic is brought here. Suppose this is uh, one dislocation and this is another dislocation, the angle between these two. Angle between slip plane and the line joining the dislocation. So this is line joining dislocation, this is slip plane, which is less than 45 degree. Then it is still going to repel. And if this is going to be more than 45 degree, then you see that the situation is quite different. What happens is that if the angle becomes more than 40 degree, then you see that you know the, the, the shift of the dislocation is quite high. And then what is that you are seeing here? You are seeing that the compression and tension field forces are coming close together. So that means what? They will try to attract each other, right? So this is nicely shown in this uh, schematic and then now you recall if these kind of arrangements are there and uh, this is exactly we have seen in the yesterday's lecture that these kind of edge dislocation will try to align one over the other to form a stable configuration or a low angle grain boundary something like that right so this is the basis of that okay so so this is very important so what is the next one Unlike dislocations on the same or nearby planes attract. So this is quite uh, obvious. Um, this schematic should be uh, wrong because the unlike means the T should be up and C should be down. So there is a correction here. And because this should uh, uh, com compare with this symbolism here. This is positive dislocation, this is negative dislocation. So in, it should be rotated 180 degrees. So the, there's, there's a correction here. So if they combine together, then it forms a perfect lattice. But there is another interesting uh, idea. What is that idea? If no adjacent planes, they annihilate and leave a vacancies or interstitials. Uh, very important. What is that? If they are not moving on the same plane, um, then and they will annihilate but leave the vacancies here. You see this one, there's a gap. So it forms a vacancy. Okay. Either it can form a vacancy or it can form an interstitial. So what is the difference between interstitial and vacancy? We can see you understand there is no atom in the void. The void is kept empty. On the other hand, interstitial means uh, a small solute atoms which get uh, entrapped in this. For example, carbon and iron is the very you know uh, classical example and familiar to everybody. Nitrogen, carbon, okay, even sometimes boron people refer. This is interstitial in iron lattice. So the solute atom should be significantly small as compared to the solvent. 
and I mean a solid solution. So this kind of motion will uh, facilitate either to form a vacancy or an interest issue. So that is what is shown here. All the we have seen that uh, in the previous uh, lecture that uh, these forces uh, on the or the stress fields around the dislocation attracts both solute atoms, right? Uh, substitutional as well as interstitial. So primarily, this uh, interstitial being very small, then it uh, get attracted much easier. Uh, so this is this is exactly we have we have, we have just said. So the energy of the crystal containing edge dislocations can be reduced if the edge dislocations line up one above the other, producing relatively stable dislocation walls as shown. So this we have already seen yesterday, but this is a, a schematic which uh, depicted most of the physical metallurgy textbook. The formation of a low angle brain boundary is shown like this, and you see that. Burger's vector and the theta is b by d, the distance between the two edge dislocation in the vertical axis is d. Such a wall is really a small angle grain boundary, sometimes called tilt boundary. The another name for this is tilt boundary. The provisional stability of the tilt boundaries results from the absence of stress on the slip planes of the individual dislocations and the cancellation of long range stress fields. So the, the stress field cancellation what we have understood, it is not pertaining to just one localized uh, event, it is a cancellation of long range stress fields. <coughs> when it comes to this kind of uh, uh, a stable uh, low angle boundary, this kind of arguments are valid. The angle of misorientation across such boundary is uh, given by this. Uh, since being uh, theta is being small, it is considered theta instead of sine theta is uh, b by d. So low angle grain boundaries are seldom pure tilt boundaries. Instead, the lattices are usually twisted relative to each other. That is, the dislocations usually have the screw component. So this this will be this this kind of you know uh, deviations will always be there in real systems. And uh, we just brought this idea just to, because it gives a very uh, nice uh, example how this uh, the the stress field around this dislocation, how it get annihilated and how it forms a stable configuration and so on. 